There were eens twa giants called Herma and Saxa at bed upon the island of Unst. Herma bed at in a cave called Herma's Ha, hoid it in and under that fine never land called Hermanes. And Saxa bed at in the same kind of cave, but at the muckle poby a Saxavord. His in was called Saxa's Ha. There are bratwatry tales of the isles about this twa craters, for they were aye want to trip and tolly we in another. It was said that Herma eens catched a whale that was sick in a monster that he had nae way of cooking him. He was aware that over up a Saxa's side of the isle there were a muckle hole through the rocks kent as Saxa's kettle, and he decided to axe his rival if he could use hit for boiling up his catch. But Saxa was a brally canny crater and said Herma could use the kettle only if he would give Saxa half of the whale. Herma was ramping mad at sick of the man. So he honked up a muckle halter and belled it at greedy Saxa. Like mist giants, his aim was kind of hopeless, and the muckle rock got stuck into the sea close by the horns of Hagmark, where it came to be kent as Herma's stack. It seems that this pair was a far out, and were never done with hooven rocks at in another. The twa giants came to be even more sicker with in another when they both fell for a bony mermaid. Every morning, this particular lass was wont to come to the Ooster, a low hom lying just out by the mouth of Burford. There, she would raid her fine like lang blonde hair. The sight of this captivating lass was our muckle for the twa giants, and so they both decided that she would be their bride. This caused them to fa out even mair, and no doubt they belt mere stains at in another, but neither one of them managed to tie the lass to agree to a wedding. Every morning they would stand at the point of their nest and shout loud that they would a love this mermaid. The air boomed with the sound of their shargin and begging. But the routes and roars soon turned turn when in smear she would slip away in the jubes without giving them an answer. They blamed in another for their lack of success, little thinking that the mermaid talked the pair of them to be ill-fared and horrible and had nae wuss to marry either one of them. After a while, the mermaid came tired of the on carry that this pair made every morning, had broke the piss of her grooming, and she decided to make an end of it, when why or the tither. So she swam close into the shore and spat to them pretty wise. No doubt, me dears, she murmured. Who can you lippen me to decide between twa sick fine like fellows? I think we man here contest to see what any of you swat gentlemen will tap me for a wife. The twa giants was totally ten in be her cuder and wise and her saft words, and quickly agreed that a camp and a twin them would be the very dab, and that they would stick with the result. The mermaid then explained that she was going to swim to the North Pole, and that she wanted the giants to follow her. The winner would be the giant that either catched her, or was closest to her when she went to the pole. Now neither of the giants could swim, though both of them was weighed at a bra distance offshore to fish, and both of them reckoned that they would be able to travel a lot faster as the mermaid would be able to swim, so they were keen to agree. The mermaid slipped off a rock and swam north by with great speed, while Saxa and Herma did swish in the water and be good to stain the line after her. But the giants were slower as they talked, mainly because they wished at times shivering in another and knocking the tithery out of his stride. In fact, they were that crang trying to stop in another that they never noticed that the floor of the sea dropped the water into the jubes of the ocean until it was our late. <laughs> and so they both plunged over the edge. <laughs> the giants had a great stramash bathing about with their arms before sinking out of sight, never to be seen again. That way, Clever mermaid got rid of both her unwelcome suitors, and Isla Unst got rid of its missed ill-rounded giants. <laughs>